Functional mushrooms are getting insanely popular, but they can still be pretty darn confusing. A quick look on Amazon and you will see thousands of different mushroom supplements. It can be absolutely bewildering. And although it may be tempting to think that a mushroom is a mushroom and a mushroom supplement is just a mushroom supplement, there is a lot more to it than that. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what you need to know to spot the difference between different types of mushroom supplements and why that matters, including how they're grown, what part of the mushroom is used, and how they're extracted. After watching this video, you'll be way wiser in the bewildering world of mushroom supplements and you should be able to make an informed decision on what mushroom supplement might be right for you. So I'm not going to go over what functional mushrooms are and what specific types of functional mushrooms are used for what purpose. We did do a whole beginner's guide on medicinal mushrooms and if you want to check that out you can go watch that right over here. Instead, I want to cover the more intricate details on how mushroom supplements are actually made. And the first thing that you need to know is what part of the mushroom is actually being used in the supplement. So mushrooms are basically made up of two parts. We have the mycelium, which can kind of be thought of as the root structure of the mushroom. And we have the fruiting body, which can be thought of as the mushroom part of the mushroom. If it's helpful, you can kind of think of it like an apple tree where the apple is the mushroom and the tree is the mycelium. Now, if you go and buy a random mushroom supplement, there's a chance that you get one or both of these parts of the mushroom. The fruiting body contains different compounds than the mycelium, and the mycelium contains different compounds than the fruiting body, but they're both sold as the same thing. To go back to the apple tree example, that'd be like ordering a glass of apple juice and getting a glass of wood. They both can be useful, but they're completely different. Mycelium itself can be cultivated quite easily using two different methods, either growing the mycelium out on grain or growing it in a liquid fermentation. Now, the process of growing mycelium out on grain is actually an intermediary step. It's not the final step in the mushroom growing process. It's called grain spawn. You can see some here. There's actually lion's mane grain spawn. You can see the mycelium growing throughout the grain and it's kind of analogous to something like seeds in the gardening world. Fruiting body is a lot more difficult to cultivate. It's a much longer process because you actually have to maintain and actually fruit and harvest the mushroom. So for example, this is a block of lion's mane mushroom that was made from hardwood and then inoculated with lion's mane grain spawn. Eventually the mycelium grew throughout the hardwood and when it's ready, a mushroom will fruit that could be harvested, processed, and used as a mushroom supplement. In general, mushroom supplements contain either mushroom mycelium or a mushroom fruiting body, but sometimes you'll see a supplement that is called full spectrum, which means that it contains both. You see, if you let grain spawn grow for long enough, it will eventually form tiny little primordial fruiting bodies. So technically it does contain fruiting body and mycelium. And you can see it really does look like it's absolutely covered in mycelium and little fruiting bodies. But when you shake it up, you can see that it really is still just mostly grain. In this case, it's rye, but sometimes it can be rice or oats. And the lion's mane in this case is just like cotton candy that basically just dissolves once you shake it up. And I know this well because when we used to sell grain spawn, a lot of times people would get it in the mail and it would look like this because it got shaken up over the mail. And people would complain that it's not fully colonized or it's just grain, but it really is fully colonized lion's mane grain spawn that's been shaken up and now just looks mostly like grain. Of course, the mycelium is still in there. It's still alive and if I let this sit long enough, eventually it would consolidate again and be looking like a solid brick of mycelium. But it just shows how little mycelium is actually required to be in there. Of course, you can, however, produce mycelium that is not grown on grain. Basically, the mycelium is grown in large vats, kind of floating around in sugar water, and it can be strained out to get just the pure mycelium. So after you know what part of the mushroom was used, you also need to know how it was processed and how or if it was extracted. Because processing and extraction methods can have a massive impact on the quality of the final product. As mentioned before, sometimes you'll often see mycelium in the form of grain spawn, sometimes called myceliated grain. Again, this is a technique that grows mycelium out on sterilized grain. The grain is then dried and ground into a fine powder. But as you saw in the last section, there's often very little mycelium that's actually found on the grain. And when grown like this, it's impossible to separate the mycelium from the grain and get a pure mycelium final product. The end result still contains all that grain, whether it be rice, oats, or in this case, rye. Another option is to do the same thing, but use the fruiting body instead. So basically you take this whole lion's mane, you dehydrate, it and then you would grind it down into something that looks like a fine powder. This contains pure mushrooms with no grain, but our body does have a hard time breaking down the mushrooms and making use of the beneficial compounds inside. That's because the cell walls of mushrooms are made out of a super tough compound known as chitin, which our body just doesn't have the ability to fully break down. There are obviously some benefits of using fruiting body powder, and I don't want to say that non-extracted
extracted mushrooms don't have a place. In fact, there have been studies done specifically with lion's mane that show cognitive benefits from adding powdered lion's mane fruiting body into cookies. Usually though, the dose would have to be much higher than in an extracted product. To take it a step further though and get the most benefit out of medicinal mushrooms, they need to be extracted. Again, this is because our bodies cannot efficiently break down mushroom cell walls. Extraction makes those compounds bioavailable, meaning it breaks down those cell walls and pulls those compounds out so that our bodies can actually use them. So how this is usually done is whole mushroom fruiting bodies are dried and then they're turned into a fine powder like this, but then it's taken a step further and the powder is simmered in large vats of either hot water or alcohol to perform the extraction. And you can see here the difference between myceliated grain, whole mushroom fruiting body powder, and whole mushroom extract powder. You can see that the myceliated grain is quite a bit of a darker color, but that's because it contains a lot of that darker grain. The fruiting body is a lot whiter because it's just clear lion's mane. And the extracted powder is a lot darker, and that's what happens after the extraction process, but it also means it contains a lot more concentrated version of those beneficial compounds. The other thing to consider is whether or not the extract has been done using hot water, alcohol, or a combination of both. Mycelated grain supplements are not extracted, so this is only really a consideration for fruiting body extracts. The important thing to remember is that different compounds require different extraction methods to get them out. So it really depends on the mushrooms and the compounds that you're trying to get out of those mushrooms that determines what extraction method you want to use. Now, beta-glucans, which are the compounds that are responsible for the immune-supporting benefits of mushrooms, are hot water soluble. So no alcohol extract is required to get those benefits out. Turkey tail is a really good example of a mushroom that benefits mostly from hot water extraction because it's packed with beta-glucans and hot water extraction pulls those beta-glucans out. This is why people will often make something like a turkey tail tea because it's basically like a low-tech hot water extraction. Mushrooms like reishi and chaga, however, have important compounds like triterpenes, which are not soluble in water. And those are the ones that benefit from alcohol extraction. That's where dual extraction comes in. Dual extraction means using both hot water and alcohol extraction to get both the hot water compounds and the alcohol soluble compounds in the final product. This is usually done in sequence where one extraction is done after another. It can also be done in a solution of both alcohol and water, or it can be done completely separately where the final powders are combined for the final product. Again, the real purpose of extraction is to make those powerful compounds, the triterpenes, the beta-glucans, the cordycepins, make those compounds bioavailable so you can actually use them and get the most benefit. Now, I never used to be the kind of person that actually reads labels until, of course, I got involved in functional mushrooms because the label can really tell a story of what's going on. But the good thing about mushrooms is that laboratories can actually test the level of active compounds and then manufacturers can actually list the level of those active compounds right on the label. So for example, you can actually look at the supplement facts panel on the back of a mushroom supplement and look at the percentage or the level of active compounds like beta-glucan, triterpene, cordycepin, or whatever active compounds are in the supplement. The other thing to look for is the other ingredients section. This is where you're gonna see other ingredients like myceliated grain, if it is a myceliated grain supplement, or other things that they might use to help the manufacturing process. You'll often see something that's called a flow aid because mushroom extracts can actually be quite sticky. So sometimes they use an extra substance to kind of help the mushroom extracts flow through the machines and get into a capsule. Some things to also look out for is if the supplement facts panel is over exaggerating the amount of mushrooms that are actually in the product, which can be tough to catch and requires a little bit of explanation. You see, when mushrooms are extracted, a lot of the whole fruiting body may not end up in the final product. For example, since they are concentrated extracts, it might take something like four pounds of lion's mane mushroom fruiting body to get one pound of extract. That would be known as a four to one extract ratio. Some manufacturers will use this to say, for example, there are four times more mushrooms in the product than there actually is using something called equivalent weights, which in my opinion, isn't really equivalent. This is something that is easy to spot if you find something like a 500 milligram capsule that contains 2000 milligrams of mushrooms, which is not really possible. It's hard to spot unless you know the difference, which now you know. Again, when it comes to mushrooms, there's so much out there, it can be really hard to know what's going on. For mushroom growers and mycophiles, the differences can be obvious, but I can totally understand why it'd be a little foggy for someone who just wanted to experience the benefits of mushrooms 
mushrooms and didn't want to dive super deep into it. But hopefully after watching this video, you feel empowered to better understand the bewildering world of mushroom supplements and make informed decisions on what's right for you. If you do want to dig deeper though, we do have a bunch of guides on all of the different mushrooms and mushroom supplements over at the blog on freshcap.com. So if you want to dive deeper, I highly encourage you to go check that out. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you want to see more mushroom content, go ahead and subscribe. We put out mushroom content like this basically every week. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Tony from freshcap.com and I'll see you in the next video. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.